In this lecture, we'll look specifically at data for public transit and learn how to pass data that comes in the industry standard GTFS, or General Transit Feed Specification. And because our tool, our library Partridge, actually converts GTFS into Pandas data frames and geodata frames, we'll also get more practice with these types of wrangling operations using Pandas and GeoPandas. Now, the gen General Transit Feed Specification is a really common format for sharing transit data. And I've included the data for Santa Monica Big Blue Bus, which I downloaded to your Git repository. But you can see there's lots of other um, places in North America and beyond. So if you want to do this for Aachen in Germany, or Montreal, or um, Esteli in, in, in Nicaragua, um, then you can do that too. Um, Partridge is one useful GTFS tool, and there's also another useful combination of other Python tools to process GTFS, um, which are available at this link. Now I'm going to start off by simply following some of the examples in the Partridge documentation, which provides some nice code snippets um, for like how to import and to play around with some of the data. And so this code here, I just took directly from that Partridge website. And it looks like we can read in the and find the busiest date and store it in this date variable. And then we can also load the, the feed. This is another code snippet from the documentation web page. So now we have an object called feed. Well, what does this do? Well, it looks like it gives us lots of interesting data sets, um, like fare rules, frequencies, routes, stop times, and so on. So let's have a look at some of these attributes. Let's look, have a look at routes. Well, it turns out routes is just a pandas data frame. Looks like there's one row for each route. Stop times. Looks like there's one row for each time a bus arrives or departs at a stop. What are the stops? Well, this looks like it's a geodata frame, right? Because it has a geometry, a point, presumably, for each bus stop. We can confirm that it's a geodata frame um, by using type. Yes, it's a geodata frame. So yeah, let's map it to verify what we're looking at. So it looks like we have a map of Santa Monica bus stops. And for most of the city, there's a few that stop in downtown LA over here. So let's do some analysis. Let's compute and map a really simple measure of transit accessibility. In other words, the number of trips that are served at each stop per day. And I want you to pause the video and think for yourself, how might you go about this? What would be your steps based on these data frames and geodata frames that we just explored? Well, we want the amount, the number of trips at each stop. And we saw above that this information is in this stop times data. Each row is one trip at each particular stop ID. So perhaps we can aggregate to stop ID and, um, and do some counts. So we're going to look at the number of rows at each stop ID with size. So it looks like stop ID 1001 has 26 trips a day, and so on. We need to give this series a name, otherwise you'll get an error. Again, try this out, take this line out, and see what error you get. And then, so let's um, then join this to our stops data frame, which above it had an integer index. So we want to give it this index of stop ID. So we can join it to our new counts, which has stop ID as the index already. So here we have the same geodata frame that had uh, one row for each stop. We've added this column here, n trips. So this stop has 35 trips a day. This has 280, and so on. And then we can map the results. And this is exactly the same as we've done before using GeoPandas mapping. We reproject it to Web Mercator, and we want to plot a proportional circle based on the number of trips on the axis object that we just created in this line here. 
Let's add our base map and let's remove the lat long um, or the xy coordinates, um, which are just clutter. So we see here the base map, we get a rough sense of where there's more frequencies, but there's a lot of overlapping lapping dots. So maybe let's, we can make these markers smaller. So the easiest way to do this is rather than having a proportional circle for n trips, let's reduce this in magnitude. Let's create a new column with a scaled version and plot that instead. So let's have a new column called ntrip scaled, which is the number of trips divided by 10. And the only reason to do this is to make the markers smaller. And we could play around with 10 or 20 um, or 50. And then let's plot this new scaled column exactly the same way as we did before. OK, so this is much more meaningful, right? We can really see the routes here that have lower frequencies compared to the routes, um, I think this is Pico Boulevard, that have much more frequent service. We could play around if we wanted bigger markers. For some reason, we could multiply this. And then we're going to just get one big marker um, size. Um, so we can play around with this. Maybe we want um, smaller markers even. Maybe we th um, think that's more meaningful. So these accessibility measures are at the stop level. Um, but you can imagine aggregating them up if you want a measure of accessibility by census tract or zip code. You could just sum up the number of stops um, within that census tract using a spatial join. You might also look at the combined frequency for stops within, say, a quarter miles of a, sc a school or a new apartment building if you want to calculate these place-based accessibility measures by transit. So this is a short lecture. But I wanted to introduce you to some of the specialist tools for transit mapping for those of you who are interested in transportation data. But even if you don't care about transportation, we've seen that these are just data frames and geodata frames. So it's additional examples of what you can do with this type of data once you have it in a data frame or a geodata frame format.